You're listening to the Armchair GM Sports Network. Listening to the Nitro Hockey Lowdown Sabres Edition, your source for all news, press conference reactions, analysis, and objective discussions regarding the NHL's Buffalo Sabres from right here in the Nitro region. Here are your hosts, Brandon Caputo and Austin Broad. Welcome back, Sabres fans, to a optimistic episode of the Nitro Hockey Lowdown Sabres Edition, right here in the Armchair GM Sports Network. Your March 26, 2021 edition. Your source of North American sports coverage by sports fans. For sports fans, there is you right here in the beautiful Niagara region. You can find us on social media for updates, giveaways, and sponsorship promo codes by following the podcast on Twitter at Armchair GM Pod, as well as this show's podcast at AGM Sabres Pod. Make sure you're following that one specifically for this show, and as well on Facebook and Instagram. And you can listen to us on many platforms, including Spreaker.com and the free Spreaker app, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. I hear Radio Castbox and Deezer by searching the Armchair GM Sports Network, of course. We have more platforms to listen to our show than the Sabres have wins this year. Lastly, our beautiful user-friendly website, armchairgmsports.com, for all things regarding our network, including articles, podcast episodes, sponsors, and contributors. Everything's in there for you guys. Please go and check that out, and please give us a like and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to us right now. As always, I'm one of your hosts of the Sabres Edition podcast. My name is Brandon Caputo. You can follow me on Twitter, at Caputo13 with a Canadian Z. And I'm always very pleased to be joined, especially on today, where I need a shoulder to cry on, by my good friend. He is contributing writer for the ChargingBuffalo.net and Dauber Prospects. He is Austin Broad. You can follow him on Twitter at Austin Broad underscore TCB. Austin, holy cow, Sweet 16 as the title of this show. Could things get any worse in Saberland? Well, I mean... Logic would say no, but let's face it, every time we say things can't get any worse in Saberland, this team continues to find a new rock bottom. They continue to keep digging and find themselves another hole. So as much as I want to say no, oh yeah, this could definitely, things could definitely get much worse. There's probably a better than 75% chance this team will have the longest losing streak in the history of the NHL. They're almost there. 18, Pittsburgh. It's, if only they could have played Pittsburgh to reach the 18. That would have been, that would have been something. I'm sure that would. Pitt- yeah, that would have been absolutely something. I mean, the good news is is they do have Boston Saturday, and then they have Philly twice, and Philly's goaltending situation. I mean, nothing. It's, it seems nothing is going to fix the Sabres' inability to score goals, but if there ever was something that could, it would be Philadelphia's goaltending situation. But let's face it, you can't bank on anything with this team because, like, I don't, I, think, even, I don't know what to say. Like, I, I'm out of loss for words when it comes to this hockey team now. I don't think they're putting up nine goals like the Rangers did in back-to-back games unless they acquire Mika Zibanejad in the next week or so. But Hey, with, future Sabre Mika Zibanejad. But. May, maybe. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Uh, in today's episode, we're just going to discuss you know, what has been this atrocious stretch of games here. Uh, we are also going to discuss the coaching change because we have not recorded an episode since our favorite soccer boy, Ralph Kruger, has been let go of his head coaching duties for the Sabres. And we'll talk about that a little bit in the open as well. We're going to talk about Austin's analytics. He's got a great analytic. It's uh, not going to be the most positive analytic, but it is an analytic uh, to be uh, to be brought up on the show as well. We're going to debut our new segment, which is called sword fight where basically we put out a poll and discuss, uh, we both pick a side of an argument. So, uh, today's discussion will be on Uko Pekka Lukanen, the Sabres prospect goaltender. So with that said, Austin, let's get into it. In this first segment today, as always on the Sabres pro- podcast is brought to you by JNL flooring and Niagara Bay specialty flooring and design company, simplified process and making homes beautiful are their specialty. Visit them at jnlflooring.com to start on the floor of your dreams today. Well, I'll tell you what, Austin, this team is definitely not a team of in my dreams. It's more of nightmares. And speaking of nightmares, the nightmare on Elm Street is no longer here. Ralph Kruger 
is no longer the Sabres head coach. I know you've been waiting for this for a long time. I have mixed feelings about it. I think I think the world of Ralph Kruger as a person, I think he's a very smart guy, but just clearly not in the right role as an NHL head coach. So we Dan, Don Granato takes over as the interim head coach, and Niagara natives Matt Ellis and Dan Girardi are also added to the staff. Austin, your reactions to that move? The firing, great. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, people can say what they want. Yes, Ralph Kruger was a smart dude. Um, but anyone clamoring for, you know, saying that, you know, they can't keep firing coaches. No, they can. They can keep firing bad coaches. And you should always keep firing bad coaches. The Sabres problem isn't that they fire too many coaches. It's that they stink at hiring coaches. That's what the Sabres have done and gotten themselves into this situation i mean we thought that the second year under housley was the lowest it could possibly get ralph kruger not only topped that he was here for 12 of the 16 losses in a row he you know ostracized and alienated not their best player but their second highest paid player in jeff skinner he basically when Don Granado comes out and says, I need to get Jeff Skinner excited about playing hockey again, that says all that's all that needed to be said about the relationship that Ralph Kruger had with Jeff Skinner. People want to call Ralph Kruger a player's coach. Yes, on the flip side, Ralph Kruger is the reason Taylor Hall signed here. That signing has been a disaster. So everything that Ralph Kruger has touched in Buffalo has turned into a disaster. Rasmus Dahlin, um looks like... I don't know... Does he, he doesn't even look like a first-round pick, let alone a first-overall generational-type defenseman. Henry Okiharu regressed so terribly. Uh, Ralph Kruger is the big reason that guys like Cody Eakin and Tobias Reeder and Matt Irwin were brought in to play his defensive-style system. Those players, besides the fact that Toby Reeder is scoring goals, those players are not good. Cody Eakin is making $2.25 million for the, this year and next year. No one's going to trade for that. I just everything that he touched in this organization was a disaster. Now, do, Don Granado is taking over a pretty impossible situation. I don't really have an opinion on him becoming the interim head coach because I don't really blame Adams for not hiring a guy right away because based off Adams comments, he's trying to revamp this front office and basically telling the Pagulas he needs to run things and he needs help. So until that front office is taking shape, we've already gotten a hint at it. He said yesterday that he reshuffled the the scouting department and that he's going to be adding to it. He interviewed Jason Carmanos for the assistant GM job. So it looks like Adams is more focused on reshaping the front office, which is what the Sabres team needs. If they start at the top and then work their way to the bottom, things can actually get better. So I'm kind of glad that they didn't rush into hiring one of these coaches. Not to say that you know these coaches will still be available once the season's over. Unfortunately, other jobs might become available. But, you know, I like the approach that Adams is doing now that Ralph has finally gone and now that it seems Adams is steering the ship and it's not all the, the owners, Ralph Kruger and Adams, trying to work together. Other than Jake McCabe, can you think of any player that improved this year? I mean, you could say Rasmus versus the line in before the whole COVID situation. He's just been, it seems like he hasn't been able to get his feet back going since then. But other than that, before Jake McCabe went out for a season ending injury, was there anyone else on this team that you said that took a positive step forward under this last coaching staff? I, yeah, there is one player that comes to mind, but I, I don't know if it was necessarily because of the coaching staff. But Casey Middlestad is starting to look like an NHL player again. He's looking that he's fitting into that, you know, middle six role. But again, I don't know how much of that you can attribute to this coaching staff or Ralph Kruger because Middlestad last year was a disaster. <laughs> but I do like Middlestad. I, like Curtis Lazar is giving you what, you know, Curtis Lazar is going to give you. Again, it's but I don't know how much that you can attribute to the coaching staff. I mean, it's very clear that this coaching staff had a certain style of play that they wanted to implement. You can just hear the differences between Don Granado and Ralph Kruger talk. It's very clear Ralph Kruger wanted a defensive style system. Granado is I don't know, I'm not necessarily sure what his system is, but it's definitely more lean towards I guess offense. But yeah, this coaching even Rasmus Ristolainen, how much of that was actually him improving, or how much of that was actually Jake McCabe was carrying him because 
that's what it looks like because since Jake McCabe has been out, I don't know how much you can attribute to COVID. It's a hard situation there, but Ristolainen has completely regressed since the McCabe injury. Yeah. I mean, Oh, I'm looking at these plus minuses on this team and oh my goodness, like Darlene is minus 30, like worst in the NHL as far as plus minus. Again, like plus minus, you can look at it if you prefer it as a stat or not, but it just goes to show how bad this team is when, they literally have one player in the plus, and it's Jake McCabe, who went down with a season-ending injury weeks ago. Um, Rasmus yeah. Asplund has only played seven games. He's a plus one. And other than that, I mean, anybody that's played a significant amount of games is in the minuses. And your top players, Taylor Hall's minus 19. Sam Reinhardt's <laughs> minus 20. Victor Olofsson's minus 19. Jack Eichel was minus nine, but he hasn't played in a, in a little bit here. Eric Stahl's minus 20. Brandon Montour minus minus twelve. These Colin Miller minus eighteen. These are all guys that you brought in, and even Cody Eakin are as free agents this year. A lot of them, or guys that you've traded for over the last year, to try to come in and be the guys on the team. Especially Taylor Hall and Eric Stahl. I mean, we can talk about that. Just ugh. what have these guys brought in to this team? That have they even brought one tenth of what we had expected them to bring? When we acquired Eric Stahl as the second line center that was supposed to shore up the second line that they have missed since Ryan O'Reilly had been traded, I know he was thirty, you know, thirty one, uh, thirty six years old, but you still expected more than ten points as well. Taylor Hall, nine million dollars. Is is there a more disappointing signing in the NHL? I don't think so. Um, two goals, he scored an opening night, and other than that, one other goal scored. So just Taylor Hall obviously said in last night's post game that, yeah, for sure I'd be open to moving. Well, who's going to take him? I mean, <laughs> with the way he's playing right now, I mean, yeah, he's got 15 assists, but nothing close to what he had expected coming to Buffalo this year, trying to hope for a long-term deal. Both these guys have been just completely disappointing, and even Cody Eakin you can throw in there for a guy that they paid to be the third-line center and has four points on the year. Yeah, so I'm going to start with Eric Stahl just because – the Taylor Hall signing was obviously the biggest one. It was, you know, that superstar. They got him for that one year. It looked like a perfect situation. If he comes in and plays good, they can trade him if the team's not doing well. But but Eric Stahl, we talked about this trade. This was a very, very savvy move by Kevin Adams when it was made. He traded Marcus Johansson for Eric Stahl. He got that potential stopgap second-line center that we thought he was going to be. Not only has Eric Stahl not been a second-line center, but when you look at this guy on the ice, again, I hate this. Like, yes, losing 16 in a row obviously mentally drains you. I get it. But when you look as mentally checked out as Eric Stahl does, that is so disappointing because you're a potential, you know, borderline Hall of Famer. You've had such a great career. And yeah, were you thrilled when you were coming to Buffalo? No, obviously not. I understand that, but. At this point in your career, come out and make the best of an opportunity. At least try, and then good things will happen for you. Kevin Adams is going to let is going to move you at the deadline because you're his friend, and he's not going to do that to you. But you were brought in to stop gap and mentor guys like Dylan Cousins. I, the way he's played this year, I don't want him anywhere near Dylan Cousins because Stahl does not look happy. He looks all those bad things people say about Eichel's body language. That's what the people. That's what Eric Stahl actually looks like. And guess what? Eric Stahl isn't as good as Jack Eichel right now, so Eric Stahl doesn't have the benefit of the doubt to act the way that he's acting on the ice right now. Taylor Hall, for the money wise, yeah, it's very disappointing. But to me, that one year deal, it was worth a gamble. It didn't work out, but it was worth a gamble. Stahl, we expected so much more than we expected a decent on ice product, but we expected that veteran leadership. And t tell me, have you seen anything that? shows any signs of veteran leadership from Eric Stahl this year? Not really. I mean, he was, That's what I mean. To, he was supposed to come in and mentor Dylan Cousins to be in that role, but it's just unfortunate for Stahl because he's not at home. His family can't be in Buffalo. His family's in Minnesota. He obviously didn't want to move from Minnesota, but again, you had expected more from, like you mentioned, a borderline Hall of Famer, a leader, and just a, a con constant pro that he would have a better season than this and give a better you know, have a better attitude towards things. Obviously, Buffalo probably wasn't a destination for him, but again, 10 points on the year. And like, wait, is this really the way you want to go out? That's my thing. Like you're 36. How many more years you got? Do you really want this to be the lasting memory of your career is this season with Buffalo? 
And people can say that, oh, he was – like, it's age. He was going to fall off a cliff. The dude w- played really good the last two years in Minnesota. So don't tell me that all of a sudden the game just passed him by. Jason Spezza is having an amazing year in Toronto right now. Like, the age, is to me, is a non-factor because it's – I hate to say it, but it basically – He's acting like a baby. You don't want to be here. That's fine. That is totally fine. But while you're here, come out, give it your best effort every night. And then people will actually want to trade for you. Like Taylor Hall, he's not playing good at all this year. And I get that. He's not producing. But for the most part, Taylor Hall's underlying numbers are at least okay. Like he he's, has a career low in shooting percentage, which if you're one of those guys, you, you have to assume that, you know, he's not going to shoot 2.7% the whole year because... I mean, that's kind of – that'd be impressive if he did. But Eric Stahl is just – every – like, I, I was working nights this week, so I didn't really get to watch the games live. But every time I would turn on to Twitter, I would see people be like, what is Eric Stahl doing? What is Eric Stahl doing? I was like, oh, dear God. What, like, this is so disappointing because I was so excited to get this guy in the summer. I thought he was going to bring a lot to this team. And he's really brought almost nothing that he was expected to bring. This is what Eric Stahl brought this year. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, though, like people can say what they want about Taylor Hall. Like everyone freaked out or not freaked out, but everyone was trying to like make fun of Buffalo because of what he said last night. Yeah, for sure. I'd be open to a trade. Why? Why? Why is that news? Why is that news that he's open to a trade? I mean, he's on the worst team in the NHL. He signed a one year deal. The reason he got a no trade clause was so he could control where he goes. It's not, you know, people can say, oh, like, Buffalo did this. But if Taylor Hall, Jack Eichel, Jeff Skinner, Jeff Skinner aside because he wasn't put in the greatest role, but if those guys were producing before Eichel's injury, the way they're supposed to produce, Buffalo's not in the situation. Mm-hmm. That's where it's – the coaching staff was terrible and Ralph needed to be fired. The front office is a bare-bones organization and it needs to be replenished. The players don't, like, aren't absolved of any blame here either. At some point, we need to look at the Buffalo Sabres' best players and compare them to other teams' best players. The comparisons aren't even close. Yeah. The Sabres are underperforming in every aspect of the game, on ice, behind the bench, and in the front office. And Taylor Hall and Eric Stahl are two big factors in that. Couldn't have said it any better myself. <laughs> We're going to leave it at that. They they need to restock the cupboards in every aspect of the organization and kind of have a different mindset. The one the one person in the front office, the one head coach and the ownership is not going to work. This isn't the NFL. And even in the NFL that doesn't work. So Carmano's being being interviewed and they need like you mentioned the scouting staff needs to be looked at. So hopefully some good changes are coming here and hopefully Kevin Adams has gotten that through to ownership that he needs help and this team and this fan base and this organization needs a lot of help everywhere. So We'll see what he does come trade deadline time. But we're going to take a break on the show today. We're going to come back, and we are going to discuss uh, the Twitter poll. Our sword fight segment is going to debut, and Austin's analytics. So stay right here. Be right back on the Niagara Hockey Load on Sabres edition, and right here on the Armchair GM Sports Network. Carmine's Pizzeria Italiano, serving traditional style Italian pizzas made with the freshest top quality ingredients. Loaded subs and their famous chicken wings, winners of the Reader's Choice Diamond Award. Four years running from Niagara this week for best pizza and wings in Niagara Falls. Home of the best tray and wing combo in town for the price and quality. Open daily from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. Located on the corner of Drummond Road and Dunn Street. Available for call ahead pickup or delivery at 905 374 Make sure to like them on Facebook and view their website for their menu at carminespizzeria.ca. Carmine's Pizzeria Italiano. Way too good. As we all adjust to this new world that we're living in today, masks are now mandatory. And Niagara's own Custom PPE is Canada's leading face mask provider. Visit them online at customppe.ca and choose between several mask options with different colors and sizes. Add your organization, company, or team logo to make your face masks unique. Available to purchase online 24-7 at customppe.ca and ship within one week. They have the best prices and quickest turnaround in Canada, and no order is too big or too small. Also offering custom floor stickers as well as face and counter shields for your business or workplace. Visit customppe.ca and use the code armchair at checkout for 20% off your custom or blank face mask today. Custom PPE, Canada's leading face mask provider. 
Attention job seekers, if you are currently looking for work in the Niagara region, you owe it to yourself to check out the services provided by the Niagara Employment Help Center, located at 6100 Thoroughstone Road, Niagara Falls, directly across from the Camisos Plaza. Their free services include resume and cover letter writing, community resource and referral information, local labor market information, job search strategies, assistance with clarifying employment training and career goals, employment counseling and job search support, second career information and registration assistance, and all their services are currently provided by appointment only. So give them a call at 905-358-0021 or visit their website at ehc.on.ca, the Niagara Employment Help Center. This Employment Ontario program is funded by the Government of Ontario. You're listening to the Armchair GM Sports Network, the Niagara region's best local source for North American sports podcasting coverage. By sports fans, for sports fans. Welcome back, Sabres fans, to the second segment of today's Niagara Hockey Letdown Sabres edition. Austin and Brandon Caputo here with you, and we are here reluctantly talking about the Buffalo Sabres. This second segment today, <laughs> optimistic as we try to be here on this show for Sweet 16, is brought to you by the Spicy Olive Barn Grill, authentic and unique Italian-style food from right here in Niagara Falls. Check out their Facebook page and Instagram to view their adjusted hours and to try their awesome new takeout menu, SpicyOliveBarnGrill.com. They are open at a limited capacity. Make sure you call them to book your reservation today. I'd rather go to the Spicy Olive Barn Grill than having to watch a Sabres game. I'll say that. With that said, Austin, let's uh, before we get into anything else, uh, some breaking news on the... During the commercial break here, obviously the situation with the Sabres co- uh, coaching staff uh, and COVID has been a nightmare. We had Kevin Adams behind the bench last night uh, because of uh, Dan Granado, Don Granado in uh, COVID protocol. And now the Rochester Americans head coach, Seth Appert, who was called up uh, to t- take place on that coaching staff, he now has it apparently. Yeah, so about... Uh, 30 minutes ago, John Bogle tweeted out Rochester head coach Seth Appert has joined the Sabres. Oh, never mind. That is a misprint on Bogle's part. He said that he is joining the Sabres coaching staff, but he typed it wrong and said that it's, it read as Rochester head coach Seth Appert has joined the Sabres coaches Granado and Allison COVID protocol. But oh. he is joining the Sabres coaching staff. Okay. So. It's interesting because then you have former Sabres Mike Weber and Adam Mayer who are going to be now on the bench in Rochester. So just bring in all the former Sabres. You got Matt Ellis. I mean, Dan Girardi wasn't a Sabre, but bring in Matt Ellis. You got Kevin Adams. You got Mike Weber. You got Adam Mayer. Who's next? Andrew Peters and Craig Gervais from the Instigators going to get called up? <laughs> they might. <laughs> But yes, the the if anything couldn't get worse in Saberland, we have that. You have the in-game host, which we're not going to get into, oh. getting fired because of some on-air comments about his, him liking a certain color of his toast, and that's what we're going to leave that at. Things just keep unraveling for this organization, and it really is just it's a tire fire that you cannot turn away from. It really is. Yeah, like, the thing about Appert is, I'm assuming he's going to. I mean, it's hard. You can't really assume it until they announce it. But either Appert, Girardi, or Ellis will probably take over as the interim interim head coach. The Sabres are going to have four head coaches this season. <laughs> Add it to the list of things that they have broke records with. Because they've had Not Adams, Granado, and Kruger, and now whoever this takes over will be their fourth. And I just, I can't, I. A documentary needs to be made about the Sabres team. Put it like that. <laughs> An ESPN 30 for 30 on the Sabres 2021 season. It's incredible yeah. how 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 much they've fallen from such an optimistic... This is worse than the tank year to me because the tank year, you had expected them to be bad. This year, you did not expect them to be this bad. We were talking in the preseason and before the season started about... This team competing for the fourth playoff spot in this... It, again, this division is a little bit tough. 
but there's no excuse that in a, in a in a in a league where parity is paramount for the league where you you're only either given 0 1 or 2 points it's not you're not supposed to be that far out of it especially in a in a shortened season the sabers are 12 points back of second last new jersey in the east division they have 16 points they are literally 21 points behind the bruins for the final playoff spot for fourth place yeah they they have a points percentage of 25 25 Oh boy, and that's where we get the Sweet Sixteen. I mean, what like what can we even like? There's nothing to even talk about with these games. Like realistically, we could go through every single game and just say the same same crap. Like you could just they're not scoring. If they give up more than three goals, even two goals some nights, they they are not winning games. It doesn't matter how much that you get a great performance somehow from Carter Hutton, even Jonas Johansson who was gone for a sixth round pick to Colorado. See you later. And even Dustin Tokarski thrown into the mix. It's just it doesn't even matter who's in net at this point. If they give up three goals, they they're not winning because they they can they're consistent at one thing. They consistently give up five goals a game because you look up and down the list there. There's been about seven or eight games where they've they've let up five goals. So sixteen yeah, game stretch just not good. They have more shutout losses than they have wins. They've yeah. been shut out seven times. They have six wins. There's an analytic for you right there. Like it's, uh, I mean, yeah, I don't, we, we, I don't really, we, we struggle. We str- like every week we say, like, what are we going to talk about? Like, what, 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 what possibly, and, and I know other co-hosts on the network, like always message me and say like, God, I don't know how you guys do this every week. We don't either. I mean, we, we we're doing it because we have to, and because we want to give you guys content to, to, to listen to. And it's just. We're with, we're in this with you guys. We're we're struggling as much as they are. We feel like we've lost sixteen straight games with the amount of fatigue that we have to come on here and to talk about it every week. It's just, it is what it is. But not much to talk about as far as the game. So, I mean, let's get into Austin's analytics. So here we go with Austin's analytics. <laughs> Austin, this is going to be a beauty. Take it away. Yeah, so today, not exactly a huge in-depth Austin's analytic, but I'm going to highlight, well, I'm going to highlight Cody Eakin because, you know, he was signed to a two-year, $2.25 million AAV contract. In all likelihood, Ralph Kruger had a lot of influence on bringing him in. In all likelihood, he was brought in to replace Larson, who... Whatever, we're not going to get into that either because I have a Larson's a great defensive center, but I also think he's got a strange cult following on Sabres Twitter. But Cody Eakin, out of any player who's played at least 15 games, because there's a couple of players that are have there's a lot of players with worse numbers than him, but out of anyone who's played at least 15 games, Cody Eakin is the worst forward in the NHL when it comes to uh, expected goals for percentage. Basically expected goals is a little metric that takes into account everything like shot quality, uh, shot shares, things like that. Cody Eakin has a 35.91 expected goals for percentage, obviously worst on the Sabres besides CJ Smith. But again, he's only played one game. Uh, Basically you're paying $2.25 million a year for the worst player in the NHL. You're paying Tobias reader, Riley Sheehan, Curtis Lazar, Rasmus Haswind, whatever. You're paying all those guys less, and you're getting more out of them. So whoever in this organization, I'm going to put my hand up. When Eakin was first signed, my exact words were, I don't hate the Eakin signing. I never said I liked it or loved it. I said I don't hate it. I was wrong. I should have said this is the worst signing in NHL history because, I mean, when you look at Eakin, sure, he's got that 120-goal season in Vegas where he shot out of his mind, but I thought that Cody Eakin could come in and at least be a replacement-level player. You know, Buffalo has that bad team tax where you have to pay people a little bit more money to stay here. But he is worse than Vladimir Sabotka ever was. He's the worst player at five on five in the NHL. And under Granado, his usage has been a little bit different. But under under Ralph Kruger, Cody Eakin was literally used as the defensive shutdown center, and he repeatedly got his teeth caved in every <laughs> night. So that's Austin's analytics. Cody Eakin is the worst player in the NHL this year. I like it. 
And your favorite line of all time, Tobias Reeder, Kyle Opozo, and Kiel Cody Eakin will go down in history. They are they are still the worst line in hockey, too, by the way. Look at moneypuck.com. They have their little great website. Yeah, that's the worst line in hockey. I love it. So short and sweet Austin's analytics today, but that's perfect timing for our new segment, which is going to be Sword Fight. There you go. There's the, there's the sword coming out, and we are going to get into this. So, with that said, guys, make sure you're following the Twitter poll or the Twitter page again at AGM Sabers Pod. It's not hard to it's not hard to find. We put a poll up there, and we're going to be putting a poll up for this segment every week, where we're going to be discussing a topic. So, from the results of this poll, we put up: given the disaster that is the Sabers goaltending, should Uko Pekalukkanen get a chance to play in some games this season? Yes, one with 58%, and no was 42%. So Austin and I are going to discuss this quickly. So Austin, you go ahead and make the case as to why Uko Pekalukkanen should get into some games this season and join the Titanic that is the Sabres goaltending and the Sabres 2021 season. Well, my first point four is, so the Sabres have had four goalies play this season. Four goalies. Linus Allmark. Lena Hallmark, sorry. Carter Hutton, Jonas Johansson, Dustin Tokarski. Dustin Tokarski has done better than I expected to him to do. But they, aside from Lena Hallmark, who has a 919 save percentage, all the other goalies have a goals against average of above three and a save percentage of below 90. Basically saying they're terrible. Ukapeka Lukanen is supposed to one of the two possible options for goalie of the future in Buffalo the other being Eric Portillo, who's in college. The Sabres goaltending cannot get any worse. Lukanen has had moderate success in Rochester, nothing fancy. Like, his numbers are 904 save percentage, 319 goals against average, 5-2-2 two, two record. Numbers don't stand off the, the page. But when you look at another young goaltender, Carter Hart, his first season in the AHL, he played 18 games with a 902 save percentage and a 305 goals against average. Philadelphia did not hesitate. They were forced to bring him up, but they did not hesitate to bring him up and play him in 31 NHL games that year. You can talk about Carter Hart this year. We, he's not really having a great year, but Carter Hart had a very average AHL season before Philadelphia threw him in the, the NHL, and it worked out. I'm not advocating for Lukanen to come up and play the rest of the year. I'm advocating for him to get a game or two just to see how he looks in an NHL game. I don't think there's any concern with harming this player going forward just by playing him for a game or two. And until Allmark's healthy, it doesn't matter who the Sabres put in net because they're always going to be bad anyway. You might as well put somebody who actually has a future in this organization and see what he's got. Hutton, Tokarski, and Jonas Johansson had a combined one win this year. Allmark had the other five in the 12 games that he played. Like you mentioned, the, the stats are bad. These goaltenders are bad. But to me, if this guy is going to be the goalie of the future, and especially goalies and their confidence can be the major reason why they don't end up succeeding. To me, I just don't think it's a good idea to bring Pekka Lukanen up right now on a Titanic right now, honestly. Like, he's 5-2 and two in Rochester, like you mentioned, 904 save percentage. He's played good since having that injury that, you know, the double knee surgery he had back a year ago. And obviously, we saw firsthand what he did with the Sudbury Wolves in the OHL, 38-11 like what a what a season that was. Literally won the MVP of the OHL as a goaltender. Like incredible stuff. So you know that this guy's talent is there. With seeing what the goaltending has done, and I'm not saying that he's not better than these guys, but again, the team in front of him is not great. They, they see the minuses. To me, I'm just worried about him coming in, getting shelled like these other goaltenders have and just killing any sort of momentum that we have in developing this guy into the eventual hopeful franchise goaltender, one of them that is of the two guys that have a chance at this. To me, I just it doesn't seem like a good idea. If they were in a better spot, obviously maybe they would they would have gone and traded for some an, another goaltender at this point, and Hutton and Tokarski and Johansson wouldn't have even played. But with the way that this thing's going, maybe if you want to throw him in a game at the end of the season, I'm okay with that, but... With the way things are going in a 16-game losing streak, to me, that's a lot of pressure to put on that kid to come up and, and 
try to do something. Again, 22 years old as a goaltender. We know that goaltenders sometimes don't hit their stride till 25, 26. They take the longest out of any any position. So that's my only gripe about it is that I'd love to see Yuko Pekka in up here. It's just I just don't want to see him forced into a role where he is bound to fail from the beginning. But my counterpoint to that would actually be two things. On a 16-game losing streak, to me, there's there's no pressure on the kid because things can't get any worse. And number two, if if they are worried about his confidence from a one- or two-game stint, if you're worried about his confidence, if his confidence can't withstand two, potential, potentially two bad games, we don't know how those games would go, but if his confidence can't withstand potentially two bad games, he's not your franchise goalie going forward anyway. I agree with that, but again... I, to me, the, the 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 cons outweigh the pros in this scenario, and that's that's my opinion. And again, I could be wrong with that, but I've seen too many times where they've rushed guys up, and again, it hasn't been necessarily goaltenders, but you rush guys up, they're not ready, and they end up never becoming what they had expected them to be. And again, Nuko Pekalukin, and you're right, he should be able to deal with, with this if he's going to be the goaltender of the future, but he's still, I don't think, ready for that spot. He's not even... He hasn't even played a full season in Rochester yet. Like, he hasn't been the starting goaltender taking them to a playoff run yet. And to me, that that is where he needs to be right now. Playing a full season in the AHL, I think, is going to help him more than coming up to this team that's been a complete disaster, that's going nowhere, that's trading at the trade deadline, they're going to be sellers at the trade deadline, lost 16 straight games. To me, him learning in Rochester how to be a starting goaltender and actually playing in meaningful games to me, that's going to be more important for his development down the road. I don't disagree, but Lukanen is not the typical goalie prospect. He's played a pro season in Finland. He's played, he's got 20 games of AHL experience. I mean, he's not going to be in Rochester tonight because of the way their Sabres roster works. He has to be up on the taxi squad. He's already, he's not in Rochester now. So if he's not in Rochester, giving him a start or two like i'm not advocating for him to be up here for the rest of the season i agree with you the better thing for his development is to keep him in rochester for the rest of the year but while he's up here on the taxi squad why the heck do sabers fans want to see dustin takarski or michael hauser play all marks almost healthy you know why not give lucan in a game reward him for you know something he's at some point this season needs to become about what do you have going forward? What do you have going forward? Al- Adams said he wants to evaluate everything. We can look at Lukanen's AHL numbers, but AHL numbers don't really mean anything. I, I, like I said, I, I taking away Carter Hart's year this year, Carter Hart was average in the AHL before he was thrown into a starting role. Again, he was forced into a starting role, but he was thrown to the Wolves and he thrived. Lukanen, you know, he's supposedly the goalie of the future in Buffalo. And he's been doing really well in the ECHL and the AHL. You know, it's not going to hurt his development to play a game or two in the NHL right now because, I mean, there's, there's, what's, you, you tell him going forward, hey, just go out there, do your best. We're not expecting, you know, you to come out and be Dominic Kashik. We just want to see how you look in the NHL giving him a game or two and then throwing him back down to the AHL to go on that playoff run with Rochester. They don't even have playoffs this year in the AHL, I don't think, but to finish out the year in Rochester. If they're worried about his confidence, then he's not your guy going forward. But if they choose not to play him because, you know, Allmark is healthy and he's ready to go, I have no issue with that. But while the goaltending situation is the way that it is, there's no benefit to playing Hauser or Tukarski. There is a benefit to playing Lucan in because he's actually going to be here going forward. If they can, can they, I mean, if they got a sixth round pick for Jonas Johansson, can they get a seventh for Carter Hutton from somebody? Like, is that possible with his one in 10 record? I would say no, because at least Colorado can look at Johansson's season in Rochester and say, this kid had success. You know, Carter Hutton, you know what he is. Unless someone's trading for him to be the taxi squad goalie but you're not getting a seventh round pick for a taxi squad goalie. You might get like future consideration. Oh, everybody's favorite. But yeah, I mean, Jonas Johansson gone, but Takarski, Carter Hutton, you're right. Like maybe there is a, a spot start for him here and there, 
But as far as calling him up for the rest of the season, that I think is is the the point that I'm trying to make that that would be a disaster. Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm with you on there. I like I said, I was advocating even the poll. We were advocating, like for a game or two here and there, not to be up here for the rest of the year. Yeah, I can somewhat agree with that. Again, you got to know what you got, and you know what you get. What you know what you got, and you know what you don't got in Carter Hutton, Dustin Tokarski, and formerly Jonas Johansson, Sabres legendary goaltender. Hopefully when Olmark comes back, maybe we'll see Pekka Lukanen get into some games because I just don't want to see him look like the best goalie on the team over those other three guys. If Olmark's back, maybe that takes a little bit of pressure off him as well because you technically have your starting goaltender back and Pekka Lukanen is there to be the backup goaltender. He's not, he's not supposed to outperform your starting goaltender, which he would clearly be outperforming Hutton and Tokarski for the most part, and those are veteran goaltenders, so... For me, again, I, I think there is a spot for him, but it, it, he's got to marinate. You know, it's got it's got to be a good it's, it's got to be a good dinner. If you want it to mar- you want it to taste good, it's got to take a while. And there's no reason to rush it, especially with this guy, because he is projected to be the goalie of the future. So, to me, get him into some games, see what you got. But let's uh, let's take it, let's pump the brakes on him a little bit, and know that this season is just a write off, and accept it as that because. Losing 16 straight games, I mean, what else can you say? Exactly. And to, honestly, to me, that's the biggest argument for getting guys like Lucan in, into the lineup because this season literally means nothing. According to why Ralph, we, it meant a lot. Why, why do we want to see guys like, no disrespect to Riley Sheehan and these guys, but I would much rather see, you know, Brett Murray, R2 Roots of Line, and uh, Matei Picard. I would rather see those guys because... Even if they're bad, okay, they're bad. But at least I know that the future, like at least I would have an idea of what the future is going to look like. Riley Sheehan, Tobias Reeder, those guys aren't going to be here past this year. Probably not going to be here past. Well, the trade deadline is going to be a dud, so they probably are here for the rest of the year. But in a normal year, they wouldn't even be here past the trade deadline. So I don't want to see those guys anymore. I want to see call ups. I mean, I know Rochester has their own little COVID situation going on right now, but this is the you're the worst team in the history of the NHL. You're worse than the tank team. At this point this year, get some of your younger players up and see what the heck they got. Yep. And you know what you got when you're playing Pittsburgh is that Casey DeSmith is going to get a shutout. In four career games against the Sabres, he now has three shutouts. That yep. That is incredible. Maybe they can acquire Casey DeSmith so he can't shut them out anymore. <laughs> oh, and one other fun fact. I know we like to talk about the Ottawa Senators in their North Division, but the Sabres have a worse goal differential than the Ottawa Senators now. That that just made my day, in in the worst way possible. I and they played four less games. That's a perfect way to send you off, folks. Again, we tried, we try our best on this show, but again, when when they don't give us much here, there's not much to say other than point out the obvious and point out what's actually going on here. So we'll see you guys next week. Uh, we'll see by then if they've broken the record held by Pittsburgh with 18 straight losses. They. Sweet 16, they're almost legal enough to drink in Canada. If they get to get to 18, they're getting there. So Boston and Philadelphia coming up. We'll see. And that's a home game against Philadelphia. We'll see. I don't know if there's home if there's going to be fans at this game, but that would be something for the fans to be able to see them in the worst way possible breaking a record for 18 straight losses in the mm-hmm. NHL. But with that said, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode of the Niagara Hockey Lowdown Saber Edition right here on the Armchair GM Sports Network. As always, I'm one of your hosts of this podcast. My name is Brandon Caputo. You can follow me on Twitter at Caputo13 with the Canadian Z. As well, you can follow my co-host Austin at Austin, Austin underscore broad TCB. Again, as well, you can follow or check out his stuff on the chargingbuffalo.net and Dauber Prospects as well. Always does a great job. Austin, thanks again. We'll talk again soon, which we... We're talking on better circumstances, but it is what it is with this season. Yep, it is what it is at this point. And thank you to all of our great sponsors. So I'll put us on, support the network, keeping the show on the air, and make sure you're checking them out and telling them the Armchair GM sent you. And finally, to you viewers out there and Sabres fans, we feel your pain. We're here with you. On this episode of the Niagara Hockey Lowdown Sabres Edition, Sweet 16, right here on the Armchair GM Sports Network, by sports fans, for sports fans. Good luck watching the games this week. We'll see you guys next week. Hey.